Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com. Today we're taking a quick look at and installing the Deviate front off-road recovery bumper with the bull bar available for the 2013 to 2015 Ram 1500, excluding the Rebel model. Now, if you're the owner of that 13 to 15 Ram, you might be in the market for something that beefs up the front of your Ram, both stylistically and functionally. Now, this thing is the perfect addition for any off-roader out there, whether it's light off-roading or extreme off-roading, looking for that front end protection that your stock bumper just cannot provide. Now the bumper here will take the hit for you. It's impact resistant. It's got that textured black powder coated finish with a two stage powder coating. And it's really just a very sharp bumper to put on your truck. Now I will say that this one comes in right around the $600 mark, which makes it one of the more affordable front end bumpers on the market for your Ram. And in my opinion, it comes with a lot of added goods. There's a couple of different things I want to point out here with the DV8 option. Now, as you can see, there is a gap between the top of the bumper, the bottom of the headlight, and the bottom of the grill here all the way across. Now, that is pretty common with aftermarket bumpers like this that are made of steel. Sometimes the fitment is not 100%. But if you're picking up something like this, your main priority is probably protection, in which case that fitment might not really be a big deal to you guys. Now, for some of you guys who aren't a big fan of that gap, there are some other options out there, some other routes you might want to take, but that is going to be the case generally with these DV8 bumpers. Now, underneath, you will have your fender liner, which you do have the option to cut across so it's not hanging down, or you can just leave it there like we've got here. It really doesn't make too big of a difference, but it all is personal preference. Now again, in addition to all of that I just mentioned, one of the big benefits here for off-roading is gonna be not only protection, but also ground clearance. Now your factory bumper hangs down a lot lower than this one, which again, ties back to your fender liners. The factory bumper would be covering this, whereas this one, since it does give you a ton of more ground clearance, is going to have that showing. Now the nice thing with the high clearance and the high approach angles here is that when you're attacking an obstacle on the trail, you'll be able to attack it at an angle that your factory bumper would not have allowed for. So this bumper does have a lot of good functionality and a lot of good styling aspects. Now, if you're not off-roading at all and you're just looking for that really rugged styling and the appearance on your front end, this is a great way to go here. Definitely gives people the impression that your off-road rig is ready to hit the trails. Now, as far as the installation goes, I'm giving it a slightly harder one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter simply because it is a direct bolt-on still. No modifications really need to be made to the truck besides cutting your fender liner if you choose to do so. I will recommend having a helping hand on deck because this thing is really beefy. It's really heavy since it is all made of a steel construction. Having that helping hand goes a long way. It's not something you can tackle by yourself. The install time will take about two, two and a half hours from start to finish with very simple hand tools. So let's get to it. Tools used for this install were a cordless impact, panel removal tool, three eighths and quarter inch ratchet, variety of extensions, 16 millimeter socket, eight millimeter deep socket, 10 millimeter deep and short socket, 13 millimeter deep socket, 16 millimeter deep socket, 18 millimeter deep socket, 10 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and 18 millimeter swivel sockets, and a universal swivel joint. To kick off the uninstall of our factory front bumper here, we do have to do a couple of things before we can get there. We are gonna have to remove our factory upper grill and our factory headlights to gain access to a couple of bolts holding on our bumper. Now before we can get there, I'm gonna remove our factory radiator shroud here using our panel removal tool. With our hood open here, we'll pop open a couple of these plastic push pin clips and then we'll move on to the bolts underneath them. So if you don't have this, you can pick it up at your local auto parts store. It's an extremely easy and useful tool to have around the house. If you don't have one of these and you don't want to pick one up, a flathead screwdriver could definitely do the trick as well. This just makes life a little bit easier. All right, now that we have all six of those plastic clips out of place, we can just pull a radiator shroud out and set it aside. All right, next step here is to take your 10 millimeter socket and remove the four bolts holding on your factory upper grill here underneath that radiator shroud we just removed. So I'm gonna use my cordless impact. A simple ratchet would do the trick as well. All right, now we can remove that upper grill here. What we're gonna do is pull back on the top here. That'll come loose. And there's just a couple of push clips that are holding on the bottom one. So if you put a little bit of pressure from the bottom here, you can pull that out of position and set the whole thing aside. So the next step here is to actually remove our factory headlights. Now when we do this, you wanna make sure after you unbolt it, you're disconnecting the headlight harness so you don't yank that out of the vehicle when you remove the headlights. So before we can do that, what we're gonna do is take our 10 millimeter socket. I'm using a swivel socket just because this is at an awkward angle. If you have a universal socket, a universal swivel socket that is, that would make life easier as well. So I'm gonna use my 10 mil here, remove these two bolts. Then we're gonna go up under the wheel well and release one of the retaining tabs and we'll be able to pop the headlight out.
All right, with those two bolts out, we can actually just pull straight back and release it ourselves. But if it's giving you some trouble, you can reach your hand in the wheel well and give it a push from the back. It'll pull right out. All right, we're gonna release these clips here. So this is one of your headlight bulbs. This one, we can pull back on the red locking tab, pinch, and disconnect. Remove that Christmas tree clip and set your headlight aside. Now do the same thing for the opposite side. All right guys, now that we're underneath the truck, we'll be able to tackle the six nuts that we have to remove from our frame. Now the bumper is being held on by one here, one next to it, and then there's one directly above this one. Those three are on each side of the truck. So right now we're on the passenger side, so it's one, two, and on the upper right. On the driver, it'll be one, two, and on the upper left. So I have my 18 millimeter deep socket here. I'm also using a universal swivel joint, an extension, and my cordless impact. And then I'll have to switch over to a ratchet for the last one up there. There isn't a ton of room back here, guys, so the swivel socket really comes in handy. I'm gonna slide the deep 18 mil over top. Spin that right off. All right, so we were actually able to use my cordless impact for this last one. Now you wanna make sure that you're leaving that last one on simply because you don't want the bumper to dislodge while you're underneath it. So now that we have the bolts underneath of the bumper taken care of, there are a couple more located on the inside of the wheel well and behind the headlight. Now that our headlight is out of place, we'll be able to access back here. Now the bolt that's holding the bumper to the fender is actually facing the back of the truck. So the stud is on the front end of the truck where the bolt head is at the top. So we're gonna have to take our ratchet for this one and our 10 millimeter socket, go inside and attack it from the back. So it's gonna be a little bit of an awkward angle and it's tough to see, but you'll be able to feel for that 10 millimeter bolt head and ratchet that thing out of there. Now there is a little compartment, like I said earlier, attacking the headlight where you can reach in from the wheel well. Once you remove that push pin clip, you'll be given a little bit of a slot to get back there. All right, now we're on the passenger side doing the same thing with our 10 millimeter socket. All right, now we're in the wheel well. We've got our push pin clips removed from here, holding it onto the well liner. Now we have one more eight millimeter bolt here. I'm gonna use my quarter inch ratchet and get this one taken off. You don't have to worry about this top one. As you can see, this is for the bumper. This one on top is for the fender. We can leave that one as is. Just one bolt here and those two push pin clips. Now we can do the same thing on the other side. All right, back here on the other side, I got my socket. We're gonna remove this bolt here. And then these two are the plastic trim. Now ours is a little weathered. It's seen, seen some miles, so these are popping off a little bit. So those are taken care of. We just gotta get this bolt out. All of our bolts are taken care of. We got our grill out, our headlights are out, the bolts underneath the headlights, wheel well, everything's taken care of. At this point, it's just being held on by a couple of clips here underneath, and then again, a couple of clips on each side. So we're just gonna pull straight back with a little bit of force, not too much, you don't wanna break any clip tabs or anything like that. So we'll just pop it out of place, disconnect our fog light harnesses, and then we'll be able to set it aside. All right, from here, we have a little bit of space to reach our hand in and disconnect our fog light wires. Now, as you can see, those fog lights, we can pull straight up here. We're gonna pinch. So we finally got our factory bumper off our 2014 Ram and sitting underneath our DV8 recovery bumper on our bumper rack here. As you can see, that DV8 option differentiated itself from the stock bumper in every way, shape, and form possible. Now the materials here from our DV8 bumper is gonna be our quarter inch and 3 16th inch steel with welds throughout, making it an extremely durable, extremely strong construction here, which is not something you can say for the factory plastic bumper. That bumper there is extremely susceptible to cracking and bending and denting in literally any situation possible. Hail is going to damage that bumper, whereas it would completely be useless to the DV8 bumper. This thing can take a beating one way or another, no matter where you are, whether it's on road or off road. Now, as you can see, it also gives you a very big stylistic point of view. Now this style is going to be extremely rugged. It's gonna be for the guy who wants to let everyone know that their Ram is ready for hitting the trails. It's got a really tough design. It's really edgy. It's got some really hard bends. 
It's something that is very protective while also very aggressive looking. It leaves you a lot of opportunity for recovery points as well. It comes with a winch plate that you can mount or not mount on the inside of your bumper here, and it holds up to a 12,500 pound capable winch. That is a very strong capability. It's a really good option for the guys looking to do some extreme off-roading and might wanna be able to get themselves out of any situation they might get stuck in. Along with the winch mounting capabilities, you're also getting D-rings, which are going to be already installed for you on the front of that bumper, as you can see there. That gives you some sort of recovery option if you don't wanna go with your winch. Now, of course, you also have some mounting capabilities for lighting. Now, lighting is not included in the kit, but Deviate is really good at making sure that if you wanted to add auxiliary lighting in the future, you have pre cut slots here for you to add any kind of lighting that'll fit in its circular spot and it also has welded on brackets so it's extremely easy to bolt up and go all you would have to do is the wiring once you purchased your lighting separately it's already set up for you and you have two on each side in addition to any auxiliary lighting you might already have on your vehicle now now finally the last thing I want to talk about is your bull bar this actually has two mounting points on the top here, already welded to it with a pre-drilled hole for mounting, a light bar across the top here. Plenty of opportunities for auxiliary lighting. That bull bar here is gonna protect your upper grill, which is a really good addition that some other bumpers on the market do not have. Now, as you can see, like I said, every way, shape, and form, this is completely different than your factory bumper. Styling gives you a really aggressive front end, and protection is really unmatched on the website. So if you wanna pick this up, it's a really good choice for your Ram, and really, I just wanna get it installed, so let's get to it. All right, guys, moving on to the install here. The first thing we're gonna do is install our winch plate provided to us by DV8. This is a separate piece, and you're not actually gonna install this to the bumper first. We're actually gonna install this to our truck first. So we're gonna install our back end that has four open slots. The winch plate is gonna to go to these mounting plates and then our bumper is gonna to go to the winch plate. I got my buddy Travis helping me today, so we're gonna get this mounted and then we're gonna move on to the bumper. All right, so now that we have everything in place with our hardware, I'm gonna take my 16 millimeter wrench, hold the bolt head from the inside while I hit them with the impact on the outside. So once we got our winch plate on, we were able to test fit our DV8 front bumper and we realized that our front bumper support and lower grille support is actually prohibiting us. We're actually gonna choose to completely remove this. Now the thing with that is, it actually is gonna remove the bottom mounting point for your upper grille. So what that basically means is if you do completely remove this, your upper grille is only gonna be held on by the top bolts here. Now that's the route we're going to take. You have the other option to cut straight across here and retain those mounting points for the upper grille at the bottom. Now we're not gonna go that route, so we're actually just gonna completely remove the support. What I'm gonna do is take my extension 10 millimeter socket and my cordless impact and remove the two bolts on each side holding on the support bracket. The next set of things we have to take off here are the bumper brackets that are underneath the headlights. Now this doesn't actually contribute to supporting the headlight, it's just for that factory bumper, and as you can see, they're preventing us from getting a perfect fitment. So you're gonna have two more 10 millimeter bolts in these deep pockets. All right guys, now as you can see, we mounted our DV8 front bumper on our 2014 Ram, and I do want to point out a couple of things. First off, we decided to tape off the corners of our headlights just to protect that lens from being scratched. I would definitely recommend taping those off just because when you're mounting it on the sides here under the headlights, it is susceptible to just get scratched and bumped, which can be a permanent damage to your headlights. This is a really good way to protect it. The whole goal of the DV8 bumper and aftermarket off-road bumpers like this one are to protect your front end, which this thing is 100% doing. It comes out a little bit further than your factory bumper, so and the last thing I want to point out here is your factory well liners underneath of this bumper are going to be visible while using DV8's option here. 
Now the factory bumper didn't have as much clearance as this one, so it hung down a little bit lower to hide that visually from the front end. Now the option there is either one, remove your well liners, two, trim them so they're not visible from the front end, or three, go the route that we're taking and we're just gonna leave them on as is. The last couple of things we need to do, mount our factory grill here. We're gonna bolt down the headlights, make sure that they're plugged in, and we'll be able to hit the road. All right, we got our factory grill here. We're gonna pop this back into place, bolt it down from the top underneath that radiator shroud, throw the shroud back on, bolt our headlights in, and we'll be good to go. Last thing here, we got everything situated. We're gonna throw our top radiator shroud back in place. We got our push pin clips, and we'll shut the hood. We can hit the road. That's gonna wrap up my review and install of the DV8 front off-road recovery bumper with the bull bar available for the 13 to 15 Ram 1500, excluding the Rebel. And you can get yours right here at americantrucks.com.